good morning and uh, welcome once again to each and every one of us. It has been indeed and continues to be a, a great uh, pleasure for me to be able to uh, minister to us, to fellowship with us, if you will, here on the morning uh, manor. Again, my name is Brother Aubrey Duncan, and um, by God's grace, um, trying to fill the shoes of um, uh, 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 Pastor Bowen, who in uh, times past uh, occupied this uh, position on serving with a mission radio. But again, I thank you all for uh, uh, tuning in. Uh, again, we've been looking this week, the past several days, and we'll continue to do so uh, for at least uh, two more days today and tomorrow of the Great Exchange Project. Um, basically, what we've been doing is talking about the plan of salvation, what Jesus Christ has done for us. We looked at who we are in that plan as Christians, those that call the name of Jesus Christ, and then we went a little deeper and looked at the position that uh, we as Seventh-day Adventists and I'm sure that most of you on the line, if not, if not all of you, are Seventh-day Adventists. What is our role, particularly in these closing scenes of Earth's history? And then yesterday, we uh, looked at a uh, couple of days, uh, yes, a couple of days ago, we looked at what is Jesus doing now when they examine, based on the Bible, what is Jesus doing now? Then yesterday, we looked and asked the question, is it really possible? And we discussed the fact of whether one could be perfect or not. And I want to praise God that the Bible says that, yes, we are. And that's what, by God's grace, I'm striving. And I pray that most of you are doing. Let us pray as we begin this morning. Father, we thank you once again for the great privilege and the opportunity to be called your sons and daughters. Yea, verily. You have declared that through your son Jesus that we are your friends, we are his friends. And so we thank you for that great privilege and, and opportunity to be the friend of the living God. And dear fathers, we continue our studies. I pray that you would inspire my thoughts and give me the words to speak. And as I speak, dear Lord, let them not be my words, but a very little expression of your thoughts through this humble piece of clay. I pray that whatever is said and done this morning, that it would find the residence in our hearts, and as a result of our meeting, that we all would be drawn closer to thee and be saved in your kingdom. Is my prayer in Jesus' name, and for his sake, amen and amen. The people had just been abundantly fed with the precious fruits of his kingdom. He had been feeding them all day with the words that satisfy their souls and about the beauty and the majesty of his kingdom. And yes, more importantly, about his plan for their lives, the Great Exchange Project. As the evening approached, the sun began to set. It radiated its glowing crimson rays upon the mountainside, the mountainside which was dotted with our numbered cast of characters of every walk of life. They were there, some of the scribes and Pharisees. But there were also men and women of every craft and trade pertaining to the fishing and agricultural culture from which they came, of which Jesus was a part of. And they, as they sat on the mountainside, they paid rapt attention to the divine teacher. On the foreground of the a mountain flowed the Sea of Galilee. Upon its clear, serene surface was reflected the dazzling beauty of the setting sun as it penetrated its majestic rays through the thin, low-lying clouds. For well, the Savior, the Divine Teacher, recognizing the lateness of the hour and the tiredness of his long-held assembly, compassionately dismissed his audience as he instructed his closest disciples to prepare for their journey back to the other side 
of the Sea of Galilee. As he and his companions entered their boat, the itinerant master evangelist seized the opportunity to get some much-needed sleep in the bottom of the ship. Oh, and then suddenly, as it so often happens on the Sea of Galilee, a great storm arose. The winds billowed ferociously. The sea raged uncontrollably, tossing its rebellious waves into the wind-tossed boat. Jesus' companions became so afraid, scared, and troubled. Oh, and praise God, then they, remembering that Jesus was in the ship, cried out, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus awoke and bid the waves and the wind, peace be still. As the sea calmed and the wind ceased, his disciples were amazed and reasoned among themselves. Uh, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Uh, reading their hearts, Jesus pitifully inquired, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? In the book, Desire of Ages, page 188, the edition I'm reading, this is what is written there. When Jesus was awakened to meet the storm, he was in perfect peace. There was no trace of fear in word or look, for no fear was in his heart, but he rested not in the possession of almighty power. But he, it was not as the master of the earth and the sea and sky that he reposed the quiet. He reposed in quiet. The power he laid down, and he said, that power rather he laid down, and he said, I can of mine own self do nothing, John 5.30. He trusted in the Father's might. It was in faith, faith in God's love and care, that Jesus rested, and the power of that word, which still the storm, was the power of God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, it wasn't too long ago, almost two years now exactly, I think, or, or, or close to it, the people were enjoying economic prosperity. They were eating and drinking abundantly. Jobs were plentiful. The stock market was rising at unprecedented levels. Temporal prosperity seemed unstoppable, and hearts were filled with hopefulness. Fun and games reigned supreme. And then suddenly, then suddenly, like that night on the Sea of Galilee, a storm, unimaginable in its scope and unrelenting in its destructive force, arose. That storm is called COVID-19, better known as the coronavirus. What a difference it made. Frivolity was transformed into thoughtfulness. The stock market precipitated to unthinkable rates, lower rates. Jobs were lost and hopes were shattered. Tensions evaporated and panic disposed confidence. Fear decimated hopefulness. Suddenly, cries were made to the one they seemed to have forgotten. Oh, yes the one that the disciples themselves had seemed to have forgotten. Some even blaming him for the storm. Like disciples on the Sea of Galilee some 2,000 years ago, the masses were crying out, Know ye not that we perish? And in his compassionate nature, he responds, Know not that I rule the raging of the sea and that when the waves arise, I still them. And that was prophesied hundreds of years before he walked the earth by the psalmist David in Psalms 89 and 19. And then he bid, lovingly bids them, bids us, fear thou not, for I am with thee. For be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. 
I want you to know this morning that whatever you may be going through, as a result of and in the face of the storm of the coronavirus, that Jesus, Jesus, the one who calmed the sea, that night on the calms the wind and the storm, that night on the Sea of Galilee, that he is still in the ship. Sister White continues again in the book, Desire of Ages. How often the disciples' experience is ours. When the tempest of temptation gather and the face lightning flash, and the waves sweep over us, we battle with the storm alone, forgetting that there is one who could help us. We trust to our own strength till our hope is lost, and we are ready to perish. Then, then we remember Jesus. And if we call upon him to save us, we shall not cry in vain, praise God. Though he sorrowfully reproves our unbelief and self-confidence, he never fails to give us the help that we need. Whether on the land or on the sea, if we have the Savior in our hearts, there is no need of fear. And I say, praise God. My dear brothers and sisters, she continues, Living faith in the Redeemer will smooth the sea of life and will deliver us from danger in the way that he knows best. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, this morning, if you would recall as we talked about who we are in this great exchange project and we talked about many things that we are, but today I want to just briefly reflect on the statement in the book of of Romans, of Romans chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. I want you to know that now is not the time to be afraid. Now is the time to reflect on the precious gift with which he has imbued all of us. And the Apostle Paul reminds us, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. There is no need to fear, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever we see that the effects of the coronavirus, death and, and, and dispossession around us, we could still have faith in the one who stilled the sea and calmed the storm 2,000 years ago on the Sea of Galilee. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I want to remind you all that, uh, that Jesus, that Jesus is still in the ship. As you practice, as they told us to, or they tell us to, uh, social distancing and are confronted with the closing of the church doors, this is the time to seize the opportunity and the space, tighten your space to embrace with divine closeness by studying more his word. This is the time to take more time to commune more with your Savior through constant fervent prayer, not only for yourself, but also for family and, and friends and country and the world that is moving rapidly towards its prophetic destiny of destruction. Oh, yeah, pray even for your enemies. Claim his promises, my dear brothers and sisters. What did he tell the disciples in the book of, of John? And this was the night before he was crucified and he was gathered with them. As he looked at their faces and see that they were troubled. In the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 27, the Bible records that Jesus says to them, Peace. I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We are being bombarded with so much that is going on. We talked um, the uh, other day about what Jesus is doing. And we spend so little time 
focusing and talking about what Jesus is doing for us, preparing a place for us, beckoning us with open arms to come unto him. All ye that labor, labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We talk about everything else. We talk about the coronavirus and so much talk about what the Pope is doing and what the Pope is not doing, what Biden is doing, what he's not doing, what the politicians are doing. What is this person saying pro-coronavirus and this other person is saying against, pro, against coronavirus? But how little? How little do we talk about the one that is still in the ship with us in the midst of the storm? My dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you that this is not time to fear and to keep our eyes focused on the things that are coming upon this world. That's a dangerous a position to be in, a very dangerous position to be in, because Jesus tells us the very one that is in the ship in the midst of the storm. He tells us in the book of, of, of Luke, chapter 21 and in verse, beginning in verse uh, 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 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Is that what is happening among us? But this is what he says. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after the things which are coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's where we are, brothers and sisters. But where is your focus, I ask this morning? Is it what Fauci is doing? Is it what Biden is doing? Is it what the Pope, is it what the United States, the United nations are doing but are you focusing on what the man in the shed is doing my dear brothers and sisters jesus continued and then shall you see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw it nigh my dear brothers and sisters, if there was ever a time that we need to be looking up into the year, if there was ever a time that we need to be coming to our high priestess, as Paul tells us, seeing them that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And, and Paul beckons us on behalf of the man in the ship. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. We need to be taking our eyes off of the storms. We need to remember that Jesus, that Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, is still in the ship. And even though we may linger, even though it we may linger, we must remember that he is gracious and merciful and full of pity. If we would turn around, my dear brothers and sisters, and take our eyes off of the things that is happening in this world and turn our eyes upon Jesus, Ask him, my dear brothers and sisters, to uh, make you an instrument in his hand to comfort someone. Some of you may be listening to me, may have lost loved ones. Some of you may have others that are suffering from the coronavirus, of lost jobs or what have you. But Jesus beckons us not nevertheless. Regardless of our situation, let us lose the opportunity to bring comfort to someone. Let others know, let men and women know that Jesus cares, that he is still in control of our lives, that he still has a great plan, the great exchange project in which he is inviting everyone. Because brothers and sisters, sooner or later, the storm will come. 
oh, it's going to get rougher. It's going to get rougher. And what will we do? Will we continue to be focusing on the storms? Like Peter, on another occasion on the Sea of Galilee, as Jesus bid him to come and walk on the water? Or, my dear brothers and sisters, are we reaching out to our hands and clasping our hands with him, keeping our focus with him, upon him, so that he would save us. My dear brothers and sisters, Sister White continues on page 214 of The Desire of Ages. When trouble comes upon us, how often we are like Peter talking about what happens with Peter on the Sea of Galilee also. We look upon the waves instead of keeping our eyes fixed upon the Savior. Our footsteps slide and the proud waters go over our souls. Jesus did not, Peter, did not bid Peter to come to him that he should perish. He is not bidding you today come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, so that you would perish. He does not call us to follow him and then forsake us. Fear not, he says. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. And I say, praise God, that comes from Isaiah of Chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. My dear brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the problem with the world is not the coronavirus. The problem with the world, it is not the disturbances in nature for which they are calling for climate change action. Oh yes, the problem of the world is not the oppression of the poor. It is not racial hatred nor any of the other maladies we experience as the human family. It is not about the confusion surrounding what's happening in the government today. My dear brothers and sisters, these are all manifest symptoms of one overriding problem. The problem of the world is sin. And the wages of sin is death. Everything that we see happening around us, it is as a result of sin, and it is not going to get better. I don't care who comes up with what plan. No human instrument or group of human beings could solve the problems that we have in the world in this moment and time of Earth's history. The only one that could solve it is the one that was in the disciple, with the disciples in the ship on the Sea of Galilee. And today I want to remind you, just in case you may have forgotten, whatever you're going through, I want to remind you that Jesus, that Jesus is still in the ship. Brothers and sisters, as we continue to experience the things that we're experiencing as uh, individuals in this world, the challenges, loss of family, friends, loss of, of job, and yes, indeed, just as Jesus prophesied, there is disturbances in nature. The world, the scientists think they know what the issue is, and I thank God that they're attempting to, you know, make some attempts to, to mitigate the situation. But we know from the word of God that they can't. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. What are you going to do? What am I going to do as we see these things come to pass? You see, my dear brothers and sisters, we are serve for God that has the per exclusive prerogative on the future. My dear brothers 
and sisters, our God declared, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel, my prophecy shall stand, and I will do my pleasure. So as we see, everything else is going on. And the call is being accelerated. My dear brothers and sisters, for men and women to come and on a Sunday so that it, they would mitigate the problems of the world. In other words, the enemy of our souls has inspired men and women, young and old, to institutionalize more sin by making Sunday sacredness or claiming that Sunday sacredness would be the solution to the world's problems. As I said a few minutes ago, what we're seeing is the manifestation of sin, the transgression of God's law, to institutionalize something that is against the word and the law of God is not going to solve human problems. It is going to make it worse. How will you stand, my dear brothers, my dear sister, when this time comes? I pray, dear brothers, dear sisters, this morning, that we focus more of our thoughts on Jesus, the man in the ship. Oh, yes, he was in the ship back then, and he's in the ship of your storms right now. Oh, yes, and at the same time, praise God, he's in the heavenly sanctuary. Keep your eyes focused upon him, because soon and very soon, soon and very soon, my dear brothers and sisters, he will come again, because that's what he promised his disciples, and he is a God that always keeps his promises. My dear brothers and sisters, as I close out this uh, a session uh, this morning, again, I want to reiterate, I want you to be reminded that Jesus is still in the shed. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, he is the only one that could calm the storms that are in this world. He is the only one that could speak to the roaring winds in your own life as they were obeyed. But we have to come to him. We have to take our minds off of the things that are happening in the world because Jesus says the ultimate result of that is your heart failing you with fear. He doesn't want us to be afraid. As I close this morning, I want to leave with us the promise that he had given to his disciples on the night before he was crucified. And as he looked upon their faces and saw that they were troubled because he was about to depart from them, for three and a half years, they walked with him. They saw him heal the sick, touch the blind, and make them see, touch the dumb, and make them speak, touch the lame, and made them walk, even raise the dead from the grave. And now that they come to the reality that he would be leaving them, they were obviously worried. I would be too. And he looked upon their faces. And with a penetrating gaze, he said unto them, penetrating but loving, he said to them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my Father's house are, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I come again and receive you. Unto myself, that there I am, where I am, there you shall be also. My dear brothers and sisters, 
whatever the storms are in your life, whatever they are, if we keep our eyes and our focus, if we keep our arms in the hands of Jesus, they will all disappear one day. For that is the promise that he gave us through his servant John. For God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, and he that sat upon the throne, he that sat in the ship, he that is in the midst, in the ship, in the midst of your, of your storms, he says, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, John writes, Write, for these words are true and faithful. May God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. As we contemplate where we have our thoughts and our focus, and I pray that by God's grace, someone would orient, reorient their thinking and focus their thoughts upon Jesus and what he is doing for us, what he has done for us in the past, and what he will do for us in the future. And now, again, I say goodbye for this morning, but please do tune in tomorrow when we present the last session of this series, The Great Exchange Project, which would be entitled Just Go. Just Go. God bless you.